Portage, Paddle, Pack Raft. We're always pushing the boundaries in terms of new designs and new technologies and new products. We pack it in with alpaca rafts out in Colorado. Look at this view. Woo! <laughs> People are passionate about outdoor equipment. Get this, Americans spend more than $20 billion a year on gear. But no one ever really sees how their stuff gets made. Well, that's where we come in. Each week, we throw open the factory doors and give you a behind the scenes look at how your favorite gear is made. Made for the outdoors. Our lakes and rivers offer endless opportunity for adventure. And one of the most efficient ways to explore is pack rafting. Small inflatable boats fit in your backpack. Their origin, Alaska, first made for backcountry travel. This is an alpaca raft. It's lightweight, portable, and built for all waterways. Let's see how it's made for the outdoors. The history starts with a super mom. Meet Sherry Tingy. It's gonna be a pretty boat. She built Alpaca's first pack raft for her son Thor in their garage. I had done two large traverses in Alaska, the second one being a 600 mile traverse of the Brooks Range. When Thor came back from his trip and said, Mom, build me a boat, um, I went down to the local, um, I actually, Joanne Fabrics. Okay. I found this stuff and Joanne Fabrics had no idea what it was. This seamstress wanted to make sure that Thor had a safe boat for his Alaskan wilderness adventures. All I was looking for was a boat that could just get me down some of the rivers that I was trying to get down and not fall apart like the uh, vinyl pool toys I was buying. Together, they handcrafted this pack raft in 2000. This was cutting edge technology. <laughs> I, hey, it holds up to enough to get down the river to the next bend. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we took this boat everywhere. So it's been on the Alaska Peninsula, it's been in the Arctic, it's been, oh man, I don't even wanna know all the places this boat's been. Neither knew at the time that some random fabric and aqua seal would be the first prototype for a pack rafting business. It was so one of those things, the right time in the right place in the universe, and it just happens. All, all things fit. It's pretty crazy. So how many hours went into this first boat? Hours? How about days? <laughs> <laughs> days, weeks, months? One boat's success led to many. Alpaca Raft celebrates 18 years of business and is a game changer in the industry. In 2007, the Tingis moved the company from Alaska to Colorado. We're one of only two manufacturers that manufactures in the United States. Their current facility is in Mancus, a cute small town just outside of Durango. So every single one of our boats is built right here in Mancus, and they're all built to order, so that we build them for specific customers. Alpaca Rafts employs around 20 employees. Thor runs the business with his wife, Sarah. Seeing it grow from them just sort of putting boats together in the garage, you know, and Sherry's sort of mad scientist level of creativity. Sherry still works in design. You created the first boat, and you are still doing the prototypes today. I am. I am. And um, it's just so much fun. I really feel like most of that credit goes back to Sherry. And her whole life is dedicated towards design and innovation. So we could cut this down. The mother-son duo work together to constantly improve and expand their alpaca, whitewater, cargo, and ultralight lines. If we come up with a new idea, we can have that idea in prototype within a matter of an, a few hours to a few days. Putting it together to go up for that. We build bomb-proof boats. We want these boats to go through anything. 
prototype gets rigorously tested. Because we spend time in them and we boat in them, we're able to think up new ideas and ways we can make them better. The positivity and passion create a fun work environment. And their four-legged friends help too. Alpaca, I think, has always been dog friendly. Anybody that walks through the door is going to be greeted by at least three, if not five, dogs. And on any given day, there's five to ten roaming around the shop. When we come back, we'll introduce you to Willis, Abby, and Sprocket, plus build our boat. You're watching Made for the Outdoors. Welcome back to Alpaca Rafts. So it's time to begin the production process. There are five main parts to the boat. The bow, which is the front, the stern, which is the back, the sides, the floor, and the deck. And our first step is picking the fabric. So Thor, what do you guys use when it comes to fabric? And most of our base fabrics are a 210 denier nylon that we have coated on one side with a polyurethane coating. 95% of all materials are sourced in the U.S., including the heavy-duty nylon. People might think, hey, it's just fabric, and it's really not. There's a lot of chemistry that goes into it, a lot of weaving that goes into it. It's the starting point of the boat because it factors into the weight, the durability, and the longevity of the boat. We'll use red and black fabric for our alpaca series wrap. As the pattern pieces are laid out and marked by hand, let's meet a few of the shop dogs. It's so great to have them here. They're just good personalities and they help lighten up the day and force you to get outside and take little walks. Abby oversees design. There's Phoebe, and then Sprocket, the little red cattle dog that's Molly's, and Rosalie, the little chihuahua. I think that means get back to work. On to cutting. Thor uses a rotary cutter for a single layer of fabric. And Rick uses this brute to cut a large stack with one swipe. And after all the pieces are cut, they are stored here. So now it is time to shop because we need one of each of these for our wrap. <laughs> Off to welding. Hey Dustin, special delivery. Thanks, let's get to welding. So this is an RF welding machine. Uh, it's a welding machine that works off of radio frequency welds, kind of like a uh, heat press, but with the radio frequency. Dustin thermally bonds small parts to the fabric. There are four bow grab loops and two in the stern. I'm gonna double check my temp, and then it's time to weld. That looks welded and good. This is where the raft gets its alpaca, which was designed by Sherry's sister. I'm gonna take this die and put it directly on top of that logo. And then it is go time. Peel off the logo. Now to check the work. Same logo. Nice imprint. 18 years later. No way of peeling that off. One department over, Jason builds small parts, such as the D-rings, grab loops, and strap plates. During sewing, the bow, stern, back, and sides become one. We begin with the front. The sewing machines use specialized thread and needles for nylon. They're wizards on the machine, like Rogelio, he can sew so fast and straight, and yeah, we're fortunate. The seams look good. Rogelio just finished the stern and the bow. So now we're going to connect that with the sides and complete our boat. Seams look good. Rogelio's 50 years of sewing experience. Bert has 52 years of sewing experience. And then there's me, the Rook. I'm gonna give it a try. We're gonna see how this goes. Do you trust me? Oh yeah, you're gonna be good. <laughs> oh, First try. 
I have sewn before, but I don't have that many years of experience. And I also have never sewn on this type of fabric before, so this should be interesting. Voila! Come on over, Thor. I'll let you be the judge. Look at that. Went inside a little bit. Nobody will notice. <laughs> when we come back, we finish our pack wrap. A boat is born. <laughs> and head out on a Colorado adventure. Welcome back to the show. We are Alpaca Raft. We've been in business for 18 years. We build pack rafts, and anyone that hasn't heard of a pack raft, really the essence of what a pack raft is, is a ultralight inflatable raft that's one to two person that can fit in a backpack. This pack raft weighs less than 10 pounds and can keep you afloat on the local river or whitewater rapids. Alpaca Rafts Manufacturing Facility in Mancus, Colorado, ship products worldwide. <laughs> the business brings life to this little river community. We're really proud of the fact that we're employing people in rural Colorado, craftsmen and women who do an amazing job making these boats sort of come to life. We're halfway through our build. So we have a ways to go before we can raft the river. Our next step is hot air welding. And I don't know about you, but when I think of welding, I think of this. However, no sparks are needed to seal these seams. Each boat is made up of a series of panels that are seamed together. Every seam is sewn first, and then there are two hot air welding steps. So this is Juliet, and she's going to show us that entire process. And so Juliet, what do you have to do? In this one, um, they pass me the boats already sewing, and what I do, the first step is put a beige tape. So we hot air weld one layer of tape over it that provides an initial seal, and that should seal the whole boat up. And then we provide a second layer of tape over the top of that. What we end up with is a seam that is stronger than the rest of the fabric on the boat. We don't want a waterlogged boat or a flat one. So there's no room for error with the final main seam. Wrap complete. Now time to put the floor in and inflate it. Come on, feet. Hey, Bruce. Hey, how's Here it going? This is our finished wrap. Sweet. Welcome to the glue room. Thanks. Let's get this guy blown up. Looking good. Woo! No holes. We'll just check the main seam real quick. Okay. We are filling for any air leaks. Because if we're gonna have a problem, it's gonna be right here. Looks pretty golden. Your side? No air leaks over here, sealed tight. A second test is performed overnight. When we floor the boats, we inflate them all to a fairly high pressure and we leave them for 12 to 24 hours. So that way we know that they hold air. So we've got a new little quality control test. Testing durability. <laughs> All good. All good over here. I'm so much trouble. Our inner tube finally becomes a raft when the floor is installed. Here are our fancy templates for this. Bruce walks me through the gluing process. Try it. My turn. Sure. Rolling up the sleeves, gloves on. There Get the you hair go. back. I don't need that glue to the raft. I wouldn't be surprised if when I'm done, the glove is stuck to the container. <laughs> Flooring done and no glue room mishaps. On our way to decking, we meet Willis. What you talking about, Willis? Willis is over here melting hearts. That's all he does. Some rafts get a spray deck, which Aaron adds. So we start with a double-sided sticky tape that we put on the deck. A boat is born. <laughs> That's a complete product right there. Fold it up and take it to shipping. And these boats are flying out the door almost as fast as this little guy can run. The 
We absolutely ship worldwide, probably between 50 and 100 countries. I ship Germany, Japan, everywhere. Places I didn't even know existed, really. <laughs> It's crazy to see how many sets of hands go into this build. What a work of art. Up next, we product test and head out on an adventure. You're watching Made for the Outdoors. which is home to alpaca rafts. And we're gonna start on this flat water and move our way up to class three rapids. Pack rafting is making waves nationwide. It's been pretty amazing to watch what's gone on with this sport in the last it's like close to two decades that we've been doing this. There's proof in the number of alpaca rafts sold and an increase in recreation and tourism. Probably our most popular boat, which is an alpaca series, which is our longest running product. That boat will go down the Grand Canyon. It'll go up to the Arctic. And we put a whitewater deck on it, and we also added a cargo fly, which allows you to put your gear inside the boat, which is great for big backcountry trips. It fits into your backpack. And even a rookie can blow it up. The best part, you don't even need a boat landing. You can just set it in and go. Right now, we're at McPhee Reservoir, which is about 10 miles away from Alpaca headquarters. We're gonna paddle out and check out some of these sandstone formations. Oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. Colorado has to be one of the most beautiful places I have ever been. Look at this view. Southern Colorado's diversity is the perfect test for the pack raft we built. Later, we're gonna move on to the Dolores River, which is kind of flat water with a few little small rapids in it. And then we're gonna move on to the Animus, and the Animus uh, has some class three white water, and we're gonna go play around in that. Class three rapids, get the adrenaline pumping. And for every adventure, there's a new memory or a picture, a smile or a happy pup. That's what it's all about. You kind of end up with a new appreciation for not just the out there places, you know, where you have to fly for 12 hours to get there, but, but just your backyard. Places like this that not many people come to this part of this reservoir, and it's really beautiful down here. You know, the world has gotten smaller over the last hundred years. There are very few places on Earth that we haven't explored, but that doesn't mean that we can't go and see some places for the first time. And just being able to go into a place that I don't know what it's gonna look like, I don't know what I'm gonna find there, and see it for the first time is this really, really cool experience. And so pack crafting for me has opened that up in new ways. Like it's for everyone. Everybody can use yeah. craft, and that's what's so neat about it. And empowering people to realize that and put together their own trips is pretty, pretty cool. Is it giving me supermodel hair? Came off without a hitch. Uh oh. 